I miss when TF2 videos were focused on the fun elements of the game rather than specific challenges. <sighs> Do you remember the good old days of TF2 YouTube? Watching your favorite content creator's take on the new update? Because I do not. I got the tail end of it, but still, its legacy is etched not only into TF2, but YouTube as a whole. Hello, everybody. How's the day going? Because it's about to get better. My name's Dr. Derp Gamer, and we've all seen the videos on how TF2 will never die, and I don't want to bore you with that same spiel. Instead, I want to talk about the content creation surrounding the game, as it's really unique and quite fascinating. We'll be going over TF2's history, where it's currently at, and what I think its fate will be. So strap in, one and all, for an awe-inspiring story about a half-based shooter game that's nearly old enough to vote. This is What Happened to TF2 YouTube. Team Fortress to release two years after YouTube did, with the earliest video that I can find being 17 years old as of 2023, and the early days of content really show how simple the game used to be. With neither TF2 or YouTube having established itself, it really shows. There was hardly any commentary or editing. Most of the videos were just people showcasing the new Valve game until Meet the Heavy came out and it didn't actually change a whole lot. See, this was a time where there were numerous updates made by Valve, but not a lot of content was made about them. As mechanically they were interesting updates, but the world was just starting to be developed. And to be fair, it's not like there was a bustling audience for it. It was still locked behind a $20 paywall, and YouTube was at the part of its life where Nyan Cat was its most viewed video. Most computers looked like this, and content creation tools were far harder to come by. But all of that was set to change in one year. TF2 was now free to play, which, yeah, we now take this for granted, but this single decision launched TF2 out of this world. With it being such a big deal, the video announcing it, Meet the Medic, is Valve's most viewed video by far. With nearly the population of Germany as its view count, the next most viewed video is Meet the Spy, which has 30 million less views. And speaking of the other Meet the Team series, they all top Valve's YouTube, with the only thing competing being the trailer for CS. Go, one of the most famous games of all time. This marketing change completely shifted the audience, opening the gates for a much more fun, casual, laid-back approach to the game and broadening the audience along with it, with YouTube as well having a considerably stronger footing, with gaming in particular really starting to take off. TF2's broad audience from being Valve's premier online game that was now free to play, as well as light, goofy fire. nature, was fertile ground for someone to show up and make an audience with, and well... Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna introduce myself right here. My name is... Germa985 made his first ever video playing TF2 in 2012, quickly defining himself with wacky, goofy commentaries. And I know that Star and Sin both made content before him, but I'd be willing to say that Germa was the quintessential TF2 YouTuber. He wasn't flashy, he didn't have great editing, and he was no god gamer, but... That was kind of standard for YouTube at the time. Series like Mail Mondays dominated the platform, with everybody making their own COD commentaries, from Mr. Beast to PewDiePie to Moist Critical and Jay Schlatt. Everybody wanted in on it. But oh boy, did Valve give this new audience a whole lot to feast on, from multiple major updates that happened every single year that kept the game mechanically diverse, as well as animations and comics that deepened the character and world, not to mention the multiple new game modes, most notably of which, MVM, which would eventually see the introduction of Australians that boosted the economy tremendously. But out of everything, everything that happened in 2012, the most important thing was the release of Meet the Pyro, as it marked the end of the Meet the Team series. And with it, Valve decided to release the animation software that they used to make the animations. Source Filmmaker. And of course, it was free. It cannot be overstated how important this was for the community. I mean, even now, very few games can compete with TF2's mechanics, but 
when you throw on an animation software that's free to use, decently easy to learn, and completely based in TF2, <laughs> now you're simply on another level. Before SFM released, considerably less animations were made, as the next best thing was Blender, which... <laughs> no. Or Gary's Mod, which while being an incredibly versatile sandbox game, it's also noticeably not an animation software. That's not saying people didn't make TF2 animations with Gary's Mod. As a matter of fact, one of the most famous TF2 animations was made predominantly in Gary's Mod. I'm talking, of course, of the beloved Team Fabulous 2. Made February 22nd by the legendary Keddy0706. This Gary's Mod animation was stupid, illogical, really random and crude, but so much fun. I'd be willing to say, despite not being the Red first Dreamer. Gmod animation, or, you know, the biggest, this was the quintessential 2012 Gmod animation. And with the release of SFM, animations were not only made more, but at a higher quality too. With Valve encouraging it by hosting an award show called the Saxies, where you were able to put in submissions for different categories and get votes. And if you won, you'd get this super sick trophy. But if you won the overall, Valve would fly you to the Valve headquarters to meet with the official animation team. And for the next four years, this was life. You'd pick your favorite commentary channel to watch, and then once a year, you'd get your own private catalog of Pixar-grade animations, with all of this coming to a head in 2015. What happened in 2015? What didn't happen in 2015? I mean, you know what? Why tell you when I could just show you? Daniel here, bringing you a Team Fortress 2 gameplay commentary. For all the ups, there were some pretty major downs as well. With the content sphere shifting so much, Germa and Stir both decided to take a break from TF2 indefinitely. As not only was TF2 changing, but so is YouTube. And the days of simplistic commentary were no more. And the animation sphere wasn't safe either. Um, January 25th of 2015, the grandfather of Gary's Mod Animation, Kitty0706, lost his fight to cancer. Hey Kitty0706's loss left a crater in the community that is still being felt. And to this day, people still honor and pay homage to this legend that we lost too soon. And as far as the impact of Germa, one of the nine playable characters, Scout, that guy, his official name is Jeremy. That's right, one of the only nine playable characters from one of the most iconic and influential games of all time from one of the most successful video game companies worth 7.7 .7 billion, yes, billion with a B, dollars, named one of their characters after the sus face Patrick Bateman Sims stroke of a streamer. But after being virtually uncontested for so long, TF2 was about to meet it's match. As of 2015, TF2 was 
kinda overpowered for the reasons I just Animation. stated. And so, to be fair to their competitors, Valve thought it would be a grand ol' idea to nerf their game. They delivered an update so historically bad that even now it's talked about. The Meet Your Match update was trying to make the game more accessible to competitive, which it failed to do. And it failed at the worst possible time as a shiny new competitive game was just released by a rival company. Yeah, that's right. We're getting into TF2 versus Overwatch. In recent years, this debate is often seen as stupid and really pointless because <laughs> it was. But you have to keep in mind, whenever Overwatch was first announced, people thought that it would be the TF2 killer. With it being such a hot topic, people that clearly had no idea what they were talking about made videos on it, trying to talk about the debate. TF2 versus Overwatch seemed to be so divisive because of how similar the game seemed, yet Overwatch seemed better where TF2 was weak. Namely, competitive. With Blizzard actively trying to have an esports team right out the gate, people weren't only afraid that gamers would stop playing TF2, they were also afraid that viewers what would stop up, watching it. With a common fear being that if a YouTuber leaves, it will take the audience with it. And the more that the audience leaves, the more YouTubers that will leave. And the more YouTubers that will leave, the more audience that will leave. Until eventually, there will be no more TF2 YouTubers and no more TF2 content. And this did happen with many YouTubers leaving, the most notorious of which being the beloved Australian Soul Germain, Musilk. And I know I didn't talk about this earlier, but the TF2 community has this tendency to make leaving the community as painful as physically possible. Being so extreme as to send You're death threats the only to stir. I value is because I can and it wasn't much better for Musilk, with him being seen as a hack and a sellout. But something that I think people failed to really think about was the fact that TF2 creators like to make content for TF2, and TF2 viewers like to watch content for TF2. Overwatch being introduced to the scene, sure, it might skirt a little bit of viewers, but still, there is a core audience for Team Fortress 2, and so it did not die. But time heals all wounds. Uh, okay, not really. It was more so people ran out of steam to hate on the game as the two fan bases became more and more distant as Overwatch developed hey guys, itself more what's and at its the end quirks. But the one cool thing that Meet Your Match did do was introduce the content for the next update. We could either vote for the next update to be about the pyro or about the heavy. And this had been done many times in the past, but it was a nice refreshing thing to do. And in 2017, we got the pyro update with Jungle Inferno. And content was made as standard, but not as usual. See, content was made more around the mechanics of the game, being considerably higher production quality with Decent editing at the very least, and really good editing at the very best. You have videos by Uncle Dane describing the tactics about Engineer, as well as Array 7 talking about how to not instantly die as a medic. Or even old creators that reinvented themselves, like Funk, which had animations in it. I mean, there was some really premier stuff in this time. And in the animation scene, things were still going strong, with people like HoovyTube and Winglet still continuing to make content. With the seventh consecutive year of Saxy Awards, and with it, the final Saxy Award, which was another huge nerf to the community. It was an event that had brought a platform to so many great animations, which, for seemingly no reason, they pulled the plug on. 2017 didn't only see the end of the Saxy Awards, though, with Jungle Inferno being the final ever official Valve update for TF2. Sure, we've had community updates and localization updates since then, but it's pretty set in stone that Jungle Inferno is going to be the final update. But content for a while stayed at pace because... It's not like we knew that that was the final update. People didn't 
really change a whole lot, at least not for the first couple of years, as most of the content was based around Valve, but that was all right. We just had to wait a couple more years and wait a couple more years and wait a couple more years. Style, the videos has a lot to love when it comes to this masterpiece. It's safe to say that TF2 holds a really important place in my heart. In 2019, YouTube was going through some pretty serious paradigm shifts, with Rewind 2018 being seen as soulless and comedically corporate, to SNL and other late night television dominating the trending tab, and most notably, PewDiePie was locked in a vicious sub war against T Series over who was the most subscribed channel on the platform. A war that was functionally a pigeon versus a tank. And sure, PewDiePie did far better than most suspected, but still, T-Series came out on top as they were a major media company from the second biggest country in the world. And where was TF2 during all of this? A staple of small content creation since practically YouTube's conception was nowhere to be seen. The reason for this is because TF2 YouTube was actually going through a really similar thing at the time, with Valve becoming noticeably more corporate, shifting all of their attention to Steam and more alluring games. This was such a big deal because up until this point, for more or less, a lot of content was dictated by Valve. A lot of attention came in from the fact that Valve released consistent updates to TF2, and creators relied on that influx to not only increase audience engagement, but their own engagement as well. So what were they to do now that Valve abandoned ship? Well, there were a couple of things. Either you can leave Thanks, going to greener I've pastures or quitting YouTube altogether, or you can stick around, innovating and pushing through for this amazing game. And I'm not saying one way is better than another. Both ways have their reasons and are completely valid. But TF2 is clearly on a downward spiral. And it's not like content creators were the only ones that were suffering because bots as well were making it miserable for casual players. And Valve did nothing. This game that they put so much character, so much heart and soul into, was being killed by negligence. Like Ozymandias, it was the idea of a great game being forgotten to the sands of time. Something had to happen to stop this runaway train from derailing and destroying all that TF2 had left. 2020 was a rough year for the world, with something bad happening every single month. And in April of 2020, the voice actor for Soldier, Rick May, died. It took multiple strokes, a pandemic, and mouth cancer to take the man down. And the internet came together in consolidation over the loss of a great man. It was such a big deal, the sleeping giant Valve woke up to pay their respects to the great man before quickly going back to sleep. But with Rick May's passing, something in the community snapped as they realized this was no longer just a game. It was an experience, a memory that never gave up on us just because it was no longer Valve's premier game and it didn't get that attention doesn't mean that we should stop loving it. There was so much heart and soul that was poured into this game. Team Fortress 2 was dying and it wouldn't be long until it was dead. And then what? What of all of that love and care? Was it to be wasted? What of the legacy of Rick May? Was it to be tainted by some neglectful company? What about Kitty 706? There was a realization of how important Team Fortress 2 was to not only gaming, but all of YouTube. And so in a last ditch effort, hashtag save TF2 was initiated. Hashtag save TF2 was a final cry for help from Valve. It was a pleading to please update their game, even if it wasn't some major stylistic update the bots need to be fixed. And it came by to the front page of the internet with a bunch of different creators making content on it, and it failed. To get Valve to change. But I won't say it was a complete failure. See, with hashtag save TF2, 
people realized why they love the community. It's not for updates, it's for the people and seeing what people can do with this amazing game. With creators like Soundsmith and Lazy Purple breathing life back into it. With animations that are rivaling the actual Saxi Awards while not even being animated videos. They're analysis videos on old topics made new. And in the SFM field, you have creators like Sino that have become so iconic with their animation style that it has bled into so many other SFMs. And I only mean the most amount of respect to both creators whenever I say that Sino is kind of the new Kitty 706, influencing other animations so distinctly and dynamically. We also have people like Silent Man Joe that make weekly content that keep things interesting and funny. And on the other end, holy freaking crap, that's straight up a movie. <laughs> but There's soldier, another one. But with people like Fortress Films and HooviTube making consistent, amazing productions that are hours long, I could make an entire video on these alone. But this is the final nail in the coffin. We don't need Valve. Kind of. I'm sure no one would be complaining if we finally got the heavy update or Sniper was balanced a bit more or, you know, the bots. But still, TF2 content is no longer dependent on Valve. I'd say we're finally out of that tunnel with content being made about every facet of the game. You want challenges? We got it. Development? We got it. Animations? We super got it. Anything you want is being made in spades. But TF2 YouTube is no longer dependent on Valve and it's to the point where I'd say Valve can pretty well keep doing what they're doing and TF2 YouTube will be pretty well fine. And I know that sounds like a hyperbolic statement and it is, this is a YouTube video, but it's not entirely based in fiction. With TF2 having multiple player peaks within the last couple of years, as well as many original content creators coming back just to make a couple few videos, but still, they're coming back. And I know that TF2 has its issues. The game code is becoming more and more outdated as we speak and, you know, the bots, but still, we're no longer dependent on Valve. The thing is, whenever I first started researching for this video, I was really expecting a clear cut, TF2 YouTube is dead. Because, well, if you're not in the community, that's really what it looks like. But it's like TF2, it's like you, you have the community that plays it, but you don't hear about TF2 ever. The thing is, TF2 content is the furthest thing from dead. As a matter of fact, it's to the point where if you just watch TF2 YouTube and don't play the game that much, the bots are only going to seem like an underlying issue because, well, you're able to edit footage and a YouTuber is not going to want the footage of them dying 90 times to a bot. They're gonna want the footage where it's an active game full of people and they're pub stomping because not only does it make them look better, it's also more entertaining to watch. And so because of that, they cut out all of the bot footage. They get rid of that, unless if it's a video specifically about bots. And the weird thing is, Bots don't seem to be affecting creators that much. Sure, there's still a lot of problems. It's a problem with the game, but as I stated earlier, creators can just cut out the bots. Meaning that if somebody wants to make a video, they can make it whether there's bots or not because there is simply not enough bots and there will never be enough bots to actually be able to stop a creator from making a YouTube video that they want. And because of how miserable it is to play the game, you think that people are just gonna stop wanting to do anything with TF2 just because there are some bots? No! If they can't play the game, they're gonna wanna have content about the game. Meaning that the content creators are probably gonna get more views. As well, it gives them an easy rant video that everybody's super pissed off at. But you get videos of El Maxo torturing himself for 100 days straight, or Shonik getting rid of the sniper and realizing that the game is actually more fun. You can see Engineer and Heavy get balanced into the characters they are now, and a banana can teach you how to gamble. I was neglect and it's a little bit more than sad. 
but we can still be happy that they're so lenient with the community. One could say they're too lenient. I know that there are many complaints with a lot of the things that are being added to TF2, but regardless, many other games get the plug pulled on them with no say at all from the community, as well as you have the problem of crappy business practices ruining what could be. To quote Socrates, it's a shame for a man to grow old without first seeing the beauty at which his body is capable. And so for TF2 fans, we're really fortunate. Now that's not saying that content right now isn't peak, in many ways it is, and I don't want to seem like I'm just excusing and dismissing everything that Valve is doing. Valve is neglectful, and in every way the community is currently pulling the weight of the game, and that is simply not okay. Valve practically prints their own money, so I don't care for their excuses. They have the money, they simply don't want to do their job. That's it. Team Fortress 2 is past the days of harmony that it has seen, and so while many may call content now peak, and I wouldn't disagree, it means no less to admit that in every majestic mountain range there will be multiple peaks, but only one can stand above the rest. But we're fortunate. Fortunate to be able to look at TF2 and admit while its best years may be behind it, its legacy is secured. TF2 had its peak, and by God, it was beautiful. But that's a statement that's a lot easier to say and a lot harder to appreciate or even accept. Sure, I can rationalize that we're lucky that we have community-led projects breathing life back into the game and creators making constant updates. But whenever I can't queue into a cough map to actually be able to complete my contracts that I've had since Jungle Inferno because nobody ever queues into anything but Harvest, it becomes a lot harder to really appreciate. And I know you're probably thinking that there isn't a game that feels properly adjacent to compare, and I would tend to agree, except for one game. A game that has come under a lot of fire as of recent because of the scummy business practices of the game company. A game that is well known for its character, and its, um, <clears throat> animations. And of course, I'm talking about Minecraft. I mean, it hasn't been doing so good since Dream posted that two hour long video exposing things. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not getting features that were previously Am I, am I kidding? So unironically, whenever I was first writing this script, I was. Obviously, I was going to talk about Overwatch, low-hanging fruit, you know, it has its parallels, issues. If you want to see that doc, it's it's right here. I was originally going to say Minecraft as a joke, you know, haha, funny block game yes. dream. But there's actually some genuine parallels here, at least with content, maybe even more so than Overwatch. Think about it, Minecraft came out only two years after TF2 did, and started off with much more simple commentary over gameplay, but eventually evolving and having a peak in content around 2015 before falling off because people weren't happy with what the developers were doing. And then it had a resurgence as people found new ways to use this medium. Like, come on, there's something there. With Minecraft, it shows the discontent that comes from making half-hearted updates. Minecraft still releases major updates, but the general consensus is that Mojang could definitely be doing more. Mojang is doing functionally the bare minimum, but unlike Valve, they don't have multiple other IPs to look at. Regardless, Minecraft is a great example of what would have happened if Valve went forward only giving half-hearted updates as the content around Minecraft has really kind of stagnated. People aren't really going to it anymore and it feels overdone and bloated comparatively to TF2 who still has a lot of videos being made about it that feel fresh and interesting. But yeah. Overwatch bad, TF2 good, haha, <laughs> imagine dying, idiot. Team Fortress 2 is nearly two decades old, with content still being made about it frequently, and the future is not set in stone. The final ever game could be tomorrow, 
It could be in a billion years. Who's to say? Valve has given no indication that they're going to start caring again. And it's a very real possibility that we're living in the future of TF2. But I want to bring you back. Back to a simpler time. The year 2015. A kid's life was being turned upside down as his parents were just getting a divorce. And he was doing what everybody did in 2015, watching My Little Pony. Uh, I watched My Little Pony. But his brother showed him a game. It wasn't like anything he'd seen before. It wasn't like Mario or Minecraft. It had like blood and guns and stuff. And so you know that whenever he got his tonsils removed, he was gonna guilt trip his dad into playing the game on the family Dell laptop. It was a potato, and I had to share it with my brother, which just meant that he only got it. And if I couldn't play it, well, the next best thing was watching it. I have really fond memories of watching Muselk unbox 100 crates, or watching Uncle Dane and thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be the best engineer, and it's gonna be super easy. I remember watching SFMs and genuinely being moved by them. Being an adult now only makes me really appreciate all that Team Fortress 2 has done for me. When I look at the future of Team Fortress 2, I can't help but look at the past and see what it has done for so many different people, what it's helped them through. How the only time that somebody actually stops playing TF2 is when they go to meet the soldier in person. I'm no psychic, and the future of the bot crisis is in fact really grim. With no help from Valve in sight, many would say it's over. But for fans of the game and viewers, we know it's not over. Something only really dies whenever its name is forgotten. And you can trust me when I say that won't happen for a long, long time.